So where we are, that will be water, that yep. will be land. That's right. It's a 10 hectare, $3 billion construction site that'll change our city forever. This project is all about transforming Perth. If you think progress at Elizabeth Quay seems a little slow... A lot is not immediately visible because it's underground. Take a look at the engineering feats they're pulling off below the surface. From an engineering point of view, it's pretty exciting. Anthony Durlow from Leighton Broad is the project manager, keen to show us that the underground walls they're working on now will lay the foundations for the whole development. The diaphragm wall process paves the way for all the works to follow. It's taken just over two years to get this far, from April 2012 when you could still drive all the way along Riverside Drive, to now with traffic diverted up Barrack Street as hundreds of workers set about creating our Swan River Inlet. And this is what Elizabeth Quay will eventually look like, with the man-made island and pedestrian bridge at the bottom of your screen. Here's a closer view of the 150 metre bridge which ferries will travel under to get to their new terminal. On the eastern side there'll be a Ritz-Carlton hotel with two luxury apartment towers offering incredible views. So back to construction of those underground walls. So the first thing we do is we, we dig a trench and we set up the guide walls which will guide the, the alignment of the diaphragm wall. Once the temporary walls are in, they start the excavation process where a giant claw removes huge amounts of soil from below ground. So that's what we see there where it's going down. Yep, taking bites of material, putting it in a truck and that goes away. A type of liquid clay is added to stop the earth collapsing. Then these massive steel cages are sent into the trenches 20 metres below the surface before concrete is pumped in and your underground wall is built. In the scale of things, it's, it's one of the more complex and technical processes we're going to do on Elizabeth Quay. It's a process that started in March. The one kilometre wall should be finished by August. It's made harder by the fact the walls aren't straight. Instead, they'll zigzag around the inlet. One misconception is that the river will come all the way through to the Esplanade, but it'll stop here. Where I'm standing will be the new Riverside Drive, and behind me there'll be at least four big buildings, including offices and apartments, between here and the Esplanade. It is certainly on time and on budget and we expect all of the public areas to be completed by about November of next year. So exactly what will be open in 17 months? There'll be the inlet, the bridge, the island, along with boardwalks, playgrounds, 24 boat moorings and a Transperth ferry terminal. And tonight, Planning Minister John Day reveals exclusive designs of three new restaurants and cafes. This green three-storey venue on the northern side of the water, a modern glass structure on the eastern promenade, and the old Florence Hummerston kiosk, which used to house a Chinese restaurant, to be rebuilt on the island. We want it to be a place where people can come and get an ice cream, or whether they uh, can come and get a, a coffee, have lunch, have a drink, and engage in what is going to be, I think, a really attractive part of Perth. The government's now calling for expressions of interest. They're after a mix of fine dining and cheap and cheerful. This is a really exciting project to be involved with. Currently, a limestone and granite wall is keeping the river out. The wall will be broken around the middle of next year to let the water in. But don't expect the big buildings, the apartments and office towers to be finished until 2018. I think we're going to end up with a very exciting and interesting precinct similar to South Bank in Melbourne or Darling Harbour in Sydney or the waterfront in Auckland, all of which have been very successful.